Today's missile launches come following a series of North Korea's previous launches in recent weeks. Most of them, according to the South Korean military, were short-range ballistic missiles. While analysis by the government is still ongoing, the defense ministry says today's missiles are also presumed to be short-range ballistic missiles. To get some more clues, let's now bring in Dr. Woo jong yeop of Sejong Institute. Thanks for joining us. Hello. So today's missiles flew some 230 kilometers, recording a maximum altitude of some 30 kilometers. North Korea has been firing a new type of short-range ballistic missile recently, and today was no exception. Why is North Korea sticking to short-range ballistic missiles? Uh, the, the, the foremost reason might be that they don't want to violate the sanctions levied by the United Nations and the international community. If they go over the certain range, which is obviously over the range of the mid-range or long range, then it's going to uh, invoke that aut automatic uh, sanctions by 2039 uh, which is the whole U.S. sanctions private North Korea from testing any ballistic missiles. But if it goes over the long-range missiles, there's like automatic uh, close that will uh, levy another sanction on North Korea. So I think that, that is why North Korea just stick to short-range missiles. And uh, North Korea has observed that the U.S. government and especially President Trump uh, has not raised their eyebrows for the short-range missiles so far. So that is why North Korea is just sticking to the short-range missiles. So it doesn't want to go as far to violate U.N. resolutions and provoke uh, the U.S. Now, today's missiles were fired off Tongcheon County, North Korea's eastern coastal county that's located only 50 kilometers north of the de uh, military demarcation line. What do you read from the quite rare launch location? So uh, there has been uh, some missile launches in the past from the similar locations. But today's uh, launch can show that North Korea's missile range covers that the Pyongyang Humphrey, uh, the U.S. base, and the Osan U.S. Uh, Air Force uh, base. That means that by, by showing these kind of capabilities uh, to reach the certain uh, important military bases uh, within Korea, that they can, they can uh, enhance their leverages for forthcoming uh, negotiations with the United States, and at the same time that they can raise the stakes on the negotiations with the United States so they can have more access to sell. Now, this is North Korea's sixth missile launch in three weeks and the eighth this year alone. Do you expect Pyongyang to halt its provocative acts once the joint South Korea-U.S. drills are over? So we don't know yet whether North Korea is going to stop all those provocations once the joint military drill is over. Actually, the nature of the military drill this time is not, uh, not incorporating any, any soldiers or military bases. It's computer-based simulation, which is about uh, whether South Korea is ready to transfer the upcoming transfer uh, Open control, op operational control in wartime. So North Korea knows the nature of the military duties this time. So it's very difficult to gauge out the true intention of North Korea. But since uh, Chairman Kim already sent a letter to President Trump that there will be a there will be a, a resuming of the negotiation after the after the military drills. There is a high chance, I believe, that North Korea is going to stop all these provocations once the, uh, the Korea-U.S. joint military drill is over. All right, let's see how things unfold from this point on. Thank you, Dr. Wu, for your insights tonight. Thank you.